Welcome to the Adventures in Ranching podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Waldo. In this podcast, I'm sharing my family's experiences of moving to a ranch in Montana. Well, I don't know that I would call it a ranch. It's something that my mother-in-law calls it, but it's about five acres and it's the most property that we've ever had. And we seem to be well on our way to having a bit of a ranch or ranchette and who knows where it will go. But what I found is that this journey has called to me. And in this podcast, I share the adventures that we go through of not knowing how to do any of this, not knowing anything about living on more than a small piece of property in more of an urban area or even in a small town or a suburban area. And what we have learned and what we're learning as we go along. My intention with this podcast is for those that are looking for a little entertainment in their day as we go through our adventures or maybe your longing to move to your ranch or your ranchette or your homestead or farmette or whatever you want to call a small piece of your own land that allows you to connect maybe with nature, with animals, with more self-sustainability, whatever your purpose is. My goal with this podcast is to share my journey and to inspire you perhaps entertain you, and perhaps help you explore whether that's something that's right for you as well. So tune in as we embark on our adventure in ranching. Welcome back to the Adventures in Ranching podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about all kinds of things like the glee that you see on the family members' faces as they do things on your tractor and how shopping is very different for me than what it once was. So let's dive in. This episode inspiration all came from realizing that we needed to get a move on with our pasture. We we really, um, we have this, what was a temporary pasture last year that we plan to, because it gets really good grass, or at least it did last year, we plan to use as a grazing pasture to kind of set it back up for the horses this um in the good weather and be able to let them start, you know, grazing it down. And um, now that the snow is off of the ground, you know, we started to look at what we had and what we had is still a lot of, a lot of manure and um, just chopped up ground from last year when it was our temporary paddock and and pasture in the pasture area there's grass coming up but in the paddock area there was still a lot of um, a lot of manure and just kind of a lot of chopped up ground from when it started um, started kind of raining and started to kind of get muddy and wet and um, and then we got snow and then we just we moved the horses out of there and then we just kind of had snow. And so it's just had snow on it. And now we're like, Oh my gosh, we want grass to grow there. And, you know, um, we don't know, like in that section if the grass will grow there. So I ended up going, uh, the other day to the store and bought some pasture seed and, Today, uh, today I needed to go back to the same store and get a pitchfork. And it's funny because the first thing that struck me was 
first of all, how much money I've spent at this store. This is a kind of a farm and ranch store um, in Montana called Murdoch's. If you've heard of it, they have a number of stores in various states. I think it's more in the western half of the U.S., although I'm not positive. Um, There's a number of stores in Montana and some in other states as well. But there are two stores in our local area, and I have spent a lot of time there. (laughs) We've spent a lot of money at this store. And as I was going into the store, I looked over kind of to the left of the store, and it occurred to me, and I had forgotten, that the second place that we stayed at in our RV, the second RV park that we stayed at when we first came back to Montana to to move here to try to buy a house. Um, the first one was one out by Glacier National Park, really close to the park entrance because we wanted to go into the park. And then the second one was this place right next to Murdoch's. But the thing is, I didn't know what Murdoch's was. You know, I didn't know the area at all. So we just, we found this RV park. We started staying there. And in my um, my other podcast, I have another podcast, I have a few other podcasts, but in one that I had going at the time in um, 2021, I, I kept hearing these trucks because I would record, I would try to find a quiet place outside of the RV to record and I would walk around and I kept hearing these trucks come in and come, come out and I was like, what is that place? Because there were these trees and you kind of couldn't see what was what was there. But clearly there was something next to the RV park that I could hear all these trucks coming in and out of. And, out of. and um, I remember one day finally walking over and being like, oh, that's some kind of like a like a farm store, like a tractor store. And I never really thought of it again. I never thought anything of it. I was like, oh, OK, that's cool. I see like they had some like pasture stuff in the in the parking lot and I was like oh that's interesting um and never thought of it again and then I can't remember when it was there was some pivotal moment when I went back there and I walked in and I saw you know, so they have lots of stuff in this store. They have um, food for horses, food for cows, food for chickens. They have baby chickens um, in the spring. As a matter of fact, I think they might have just finished getting their last load of baby chickens that they sell. And they sell like hot cakes here. It's like you have to get them the same day because they're just like they're gone. Everybody buys them. Um, but they have, you know, shavings. Um, they have some horse, a a basic range of horse tack, like halters and lead ropes and stuff like that. Not like a really extensive tack shop, like in a particular discipline, but they have some, they have some Western stuff and they have some English stuff. And they have like dewormers and they have shoe stuff and buckets and, and all of that. Um, and then they have, um, you know, they, they have almost like what would be like a, um, what do you call it? Like a true value kind of a thing. Like, um, I don't know, just like, you know, lengths of rope and lengths of chain and they have gun stuff and 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 then they have this whole like kind of like clothes section with kind of when I first walked in I was like wow it's like it's like the Hallmark Channel outfits I was like this is so cool it's like western wear but like the real western wear not like not like um fake western wear it's like you know ranch wear kind of stuff and 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 they have ho- like a home decor section with some really cool stuff like tchotchkes, like little, um, 
little things like I have I have a I got a sign that said a little it's a little plaque that goes on my bookshelf that says I'd rather be riding you know um but they have a whole bunch of things like that and um we actually got a set of of dishes that uh actually you know what we didn't get them from here we were going to get them from from Murdoch's and we got them from um Cabela's but um they were kind of like western western looking um, mountain scene dishes, a dish set. But my point is that Montana or um, Murdoch's has a little bit of everything. And the first time that I walked in, I remember just kind of walking in and just feeling at home, like feeling like walking through the clothing section and they have Western, you know, they have cowboy boots and they have cowboy hats and they have like garden hats and 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 they have muck boots and they do have snow boots too that sort of thing but I remember walking through and just seeing all the kind of like ranch western kind of stuff and just being like wow this is so cool this is really really cool and I I realized it's interesting because I remember feeling like it awakened a sleeping, almost like a sleeping giant, not giant, but like a, a sleeping part of me. It was like a part of me that was there um, that I couldn't see until I walked in that store and I I felt it. I felt it. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. And now I can't tell you how much of our money has gone to Murdoch's? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. You know, we bought our tea steaks there. We bought our electric fencing there. We bought, um, we did lots of stuff to get ready for the first, first horse with like buckets and bucket holders and um, all kinds of things. And I was reminded of all this today because I went there because we needed a pitchfork. Um, I have a couple of, I bought a couple of these like lightweight, um, like plastic tined pitchforks for, you know, when you're just kind of like loosely um, picking out your horse's stall uh, or your horse's shelter with, um, with manure and you want to kind of conserve the shavings. Um, but we had an old, like an old school, like four tine, really strong metal, uh, steel, I guess is what it is. Wood handled pitchfork that my husband, I don't know. I don't know why he had it, but he, he's a handy guy. I think I've said that over and over and over again. And he just has stuff. So he had a pitchfork. And, um, so we've had that one strong metal pitchfork that we've used for like, um, like when I've needed to, when I got like a big bale of hay and these big bales of hay, they don't, they're really big. So like you want to get a flake out, you you can't give a horse, one horse, one whole flake because the whole flake is like, it's huge. It's massive, right? So you, you kind of need like a strong pitchfork to be able to kind of like stab it and like take like a wedge, if you will. And that's the equivalent of like a flake of a small bale of hay. So I've used the pitchfork for that. Um, and we also over the winter when we were shoveling, you know, manure and cleaning out the um, shelter using the tractor, the um, the little, you know, the little plastic tined manure pitchforks, if you will, um, they did not work at all. Um, what we needed was, you know, to use this really, really strong steel four tined, I think it's four tined wood handled pitchfork, but we only had one. And so we would kind of like take turns using it, like, cause the, the plastic ones would never have worked with the heavy, heavy, um, winter frozen horse turds. <laughs> And, and, and when, when it's kind of all clumped up and it's cold. Um, so today we were getting ready to, um, like we want to spread some of this pasture seed in our paddock 
so that the grass grows up there. Um, and we needed another pitchfork because my husband went through and he kind of like scraped, he used our tractor and he kind of scraped all the manure into a big pile. Um, but we still, our loader, we have a loader on the front of the tr- uh, tractor, but it still doesn't, it scoops some stuff up into it, but it doesn't, you still have to kind of use a pitchfork. So we needed two pitch, two strong pitchforks. So I went to Murdoch's and I was looking at pitchforks and I had seen online that pitchforks were like 60 bucks. I'm like 60 bucks for a pitchfork. That's crazy. And I thought that I had seen some at Murdoch's for like 35. So I'm like, I'm going to get one of those $35 ones. So I go into Murdoch's and I realize, oh, when I start really looking at the pitchforks and I start really thinking about the pitchforks, I see the $35 one. It has like many, many tines and it's, it's metal, but the metal, I don't know what kind of metal it is. It's not nearly as strong as the other ones the more expensive ones and and it's not much better than the plastic ones that we already have that are fine for like cleaning out um you know just kind of picking out a stall that's just not that bad but when you're really doing some heavy lifting you need like a serious pitchfork so I was like okay um these $35 ones aren't going to work. And so then I'm I'm literally standing there in Murdoch's looking at and comparing the features of pitchforks and comparing the prices. Oh, oh, that one has four tines and that one has five tines. And this one has a stronger, whatever, tensile strength. I don't know what it is. Stronger gauge. I, I don't know what the term is, but it clearly I could like touch the tines and I could see which ones were stronger and which ones were not as strong. Um, and so I ended up kind of wondering like, oh, well, maybe Ace Hardware, there's a new Ace Hardware not far away. So maybe I should just go see what they have. Um, Because Murdoch's, unless you get stuff on sale, tends to be a good bit pricier than any place else. But sometimes you have to go to Murdoch's because they're the only one in town that has what you need. So I go up to Ace Hardware and it's very clear they do not have what I'm looking for. So I I spend two minutes in there and then I turn back around and head back to Murdoch's. And it's crazy because I suddenly had a flash of living in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I remember when I was in my early 20s, I had just moved to San Francisco and I I kind of had a period where I really, really, really got into fashion and um and i remember there's a um kind of a part of san francisco called union square i don't know what the state of it is like these days cuz downtown san francisco is really different than it used to be but um union square was you know this kind of beautiful section and there are a lot of like you know really higher end brand stores around um there there was like a big Nike store I think there was a big Macy's um there was maybe I can't remember if it was Neiman Marcus or Bloomingdale's and then a bunch of things like you know Coach Gucci all that kind of stuff um and and I used to just (laughs) I remember shopping in those places. And it was, you know, in my early 20s, it was really the first time that I had income. Um, Like I had a good salary and disposable income. You know, I was single, I was living in the city. And, you know, I had reasonable rent with roommates. And so I had some money that I could do things with. And, And after having been a poor college student, it was really a big deal to be able to to have that and I remember just like going to these stores and like like looking at these shoes and then looking at those shoes and looking at this outfit and looking at those outfits and you know buying this and buying that and coming back with these 
you know, bags of clothes and, and spending a lot of money on like fashion. Um, and it's so funny because I had a flashback to that while I was in Murdoch's <laughs> looking at pitchforks <laughs> and I'm looking at these pitchforks and I'm analyzing the number of tines and the strength of the tines and is this wood handle going to be like, is it going to like last longer? Because, you know, it's like, well, we're going to have this pitchfork for a while. So we might as well get one that's like going to last even if it's, you know, 10 bucks more or whatever. Like we want to get equipment that's not going to break and and whatever, right? So, but we're also not looking to break the bank. Like we, we have had to buy so much stuff. And every time we think we have enough stuff, it turns out there's more stuff we have to buy. It's like the endless thing of new things that we have to buy as part of our adventures in ranching. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, we need this thing and this implement for the tractor and this tool and this, that, and whatever. So, so I'm kind of aware of that. So, um, so I'm, I'm conscious of not just, you know, buying the most expensive item if we don't need it, but I, I also, you know, want to invest in things that are going to last. So here I am having this flashback to shopping on in Union Square in downtown San Francisco, or it, a number of years after I first moved to San Francisco, I was the CEO and, and um, founder of an internet startup that was focused in the men's fashion space. And as part of that, I would travel to New York City, to Manhattan a lot. And I was doing meetings with a lot of big name fashion brands and men's magazine publishers. And I would, I would do shopping in Manhattan. You know, I would go to these stores and, and kind of like do all this stuff. And it just, it struck me here I am in Montana, in this farm store, doing this like analysis on these pitchforks and um you know like to me it's just as important what pitchfork I get and I realize I get so excited about things like pitchforks now and it was just so funny and I was it was just occurring to me um how how much of a different you know, lifestyle. Now, granted, I've used a lot of pitchforks. I started shoveling horse manure when I was probably, you know, five. I think, yeah, I think I was five, um, five or six and, you know, did shovel a lot. So I've used a lot of pitchforks, but I never bought a pitchfork because it was always like, well, what did the barn have? What did they have? You know, I never really thought about four tines versus five tines and how strong those tines are and whatever. It was like, you just use what was there and that's what you got used to. But when you're buying something from scratch, when you're setting up your own, you know, new small horse ranch or ranchette, you know, nobody's supplying it for you. You gotta, you gotta figure it out. So it was just cracking me up that I'm standing there doing all of this and then it kind of cracked me up as I was I was leaving and I look over and I see this RV park and I think oh my gosh we stayed there for a while and and when we stayed there I didn't even know what that store was like right next to Murdoch's and I didn't even know because Murdoch's was behind a, a row of trees, so I couldn't really see it. And I didn't really notice it from the road. Um, and I didn't know what the sign really meant. Um, I think maybe it says Murdoch's, maybe it says farm and something on it, but I never really noticed that. You know, we were like new to the area. So everything, everything was just kind of like looking new. Um, but here it was, this store was right there. It was right there and, and it was right behind me. And now I go there all the time. Like I was just there yesterday and I was there, I think, a couple of days before that. And sometimes I go there multiple times a day because <laughs> I realized we need something else. Oh, we ran out of more blah, 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 fencing this, that, or the other, or whatever. I can't tell you how many times we've gone there. So it was so funny to do that and think about how I used to shop 
and what I used to shop for and what I shop for now and what it's like, (laughs) what it's like. And, you know, the other day when I was there, I spent a lot of time talking about pasture seed, talking about, um, you know, well, what's in this mix and what's in that mix and, and, um, what's, what's going to grow and what do you need to do to your ground to get it to grow? Like we, we, we had a little bit of experience with that, with like sod and with like, um, front lawn grass when we lived in Pennsylvania and we had a small yard. Um, and then we were going to try to grow some grass at our, at our yard in California, which is much drier. So we've had a little bit of experience with like regular grass seed. But when you're talking about pasture seed for a horse and you're talking about land that already has things, and then you're talking about, you know, land that has these big um, pine trees. So there's some shaded areas and not shaded areas and what's already down and, and all of that. It's just a whole different world. It is really a whole different world. That's all been part of our adventure in ranching here. Um, so I had that happen today and it was just so funny. Another thing I've talked about how I like country music now and I wouldn't say that I like all country music, but I like um, Walker Hayes, I think is his name. I like all his songs. And then I like, um, I forget the name of the guy's song that we listened to some songs from um, when we did line dancing. And I like his stuff. And then I like, I think his name's Alan Jackson. I like his stuff too. Um, So there's some, some people that I like. And I, and I really love the like, just the kind of like storytelling aspect of the country songs when they're just, they're just telling kind of like a fun light story. I really like that. But it's funny because, um, I almost feel like the universe was kind of showing me how far I've come because I was playing my Pandora channel. I have a channel, um, on the music station, Pandora. And I was listening to it on the way back from Murdoch's and, you know, when it plays like Walker Hayes and, um, a bunch of different stuff, but it, it, it started playing jazz <laughs> and I thought, wow, I've always loved jazz. I mean, one of my favorite things was when I was living in San Francisco, um, and around Christmas time, listening to jazz And walking around on like kind of like slightly rainy nights and um, just, I don't know, there was something about the the jazz music, you know, and listening to it. And uh, there's certain jazz musicians I really like. So it was so funny because I was thinking, here I am, I'm leaving, you know, I'm leaving Murdoch's, which is a place I didn't know what it even was. Um, I practically cried when I first went into it and saw all this like Western clothing that like somehow lit up my heart in a way that I didn't even, I didn't even realize. And then I basically live at Murdoch's, you know, since we've moved into this property and then I'm, I'm leaving and then it's like a country song comes on and I'm listening to it and then a jazz song comes on. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, so many different sides, so many different sides of myself that I've explored in this life. And yet I'm so excited about, you know, the new things, the new things that we're doing here in Montana. And that leads me to something else I wanted to talk about. So I am, um, I was going to drop off the pitchfork and then run back out to do some other errands um, because we only have two pitchforks and my sons have been recruited to help with moving some of the old um, manure that was in this temporary paddock area where we're trying to plant the seed, trying to move it to another spot. And um, so they were going to help with the tractor. And I I go to walk out because I hear the tractor running and I'm like, oh, I guess they got started. And I go back And my preteen son is behind the wheel of the tractor. 
and he's got the biggest grin on his face that I think I've seen since we've moved here. I mean, I don't know. The kid, the kid loves sushi. He's decided he loves sushi. When we lived in the Bay Area, my kids wouldn't touch sushi really with a 10 foot pole, but there's a great sushi restaurant here in Montana and they can do gluten-free stuff, which, which, um, is what we need to have. And, um, my kids just have come to love sushi. It's their favorite food and he loves sushi. And yet, you know, it's like a surefire way to get him to like laugh and smile. And, um, it's so funny because walking back there and seeing him on this tractor, first of all, my heart stopped because I was like, oh my gosh, this huge, huge, it's not a huge tractor, but it's, you know, it's a piece of machinery and he's driving it and my husband's right there. But still, I had like a mom freak out moment of like, ah, almost like screaming, but my son's face was lit up like a light bulb with delight you know and it's so funny because um my husband's like this too like the other day I said to my husband I'm like I think we need to get some of that stuff up in the paddock so that we can get this grass you know we can get some seed down so that um we're just making sure we get the maximum amount of you know grass for pasture so we don't have to keep doing so much hay all summer and, and so he's like, okay, well, you know, if you do these things for me, then I'll, I'll go out and do that thing for you. And I'm like, okay. So he was, so he was going to put like 45 minutes into it. But <laughs> the other day when I went out, my husband was out there. He was good out there for like a good, almost two hours. And it's like, it's like a toy. It's like a kid with a toy. It's like, I don't know what it is. Um, but every time he gets on that tractor, it's like, I joked, I joked with him that like, he he must have some ancestral roots that were like ranchers because it's like every time he gets on the tractor, um, as long as it's working and as long as, you know, he's not having all kinds of mechanical issues or, you know, an implement that needs to be disconnected. And we need 20 new things to be able to get that new implement on, which is what we had a lot of. Um, Now we kind of have a lot of the drill down. And when I see him on the tractor, it's like he just gets really focused. He gets into the zen of his tractor activity. And so that's what he did. He was just like, I thought he was just going to kind of like scrape some of this, um, loose manure in the one section. And instead he like did this like whole master job. And I could tell he had kind of been in a bad mood before. Um, but I could tell he was like in a really great mood. Right. So like going out on the tractor and doing this stuff, it's like, it changes him, you know, it's like he, it's like he recharges and he's like a kid in a candy store. And then I, you know, I was laughing about that the other day. And then here I am, I come back from Murdoch's and I come over and my 12 year old, he's 12, he'll be 13. Um, so he's like 12 and a half. My 12 year old is literally grinning, like the biggest grin I've seen since we've moved to Montana because he's behind the wheel of the tractor. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, you know, such different things from what we used to do. You know, another thing is I don't drive in or out of our driveway without stopping and saying hello to my horses. Um, because they're always in a pasture on either the one side or the other side. And, um, so I always like, it's this thing now I just stop where I'm at, wherever they are, I leave the car running typically and put it in park and then I go over and normally they'll run up to me and say hi and um and I you know give them a pat and you know it's just it's so funny it's like of course I'm going to say hi to my horses as they come in and out of the driveway you know it's just what I do. I'm always like, well, where are they? What are they doing? What part of the pasture are they at? And then, you know, I call them over to me and they come over and I pet them and then I pick up and I go on my way. 
And it's just yet another thing that is so, so different from what and how I used to live, you know, and it's, and it's fun. It's really, really fun. I I can't, um, I can't say how much it's like my heart just feels settled here. My heart feels settled with this. And, and actually to that end, I want to talk a little bit about clothes. Um, so I mentioned that, you know, there was a period where I lived in San Francisco where I kind of got really into fashion. Um, and you know, so I was going out to these like, you know, hip restaurants and bars and clubs and this, that, and the other, and, you know, dress to the nines and whatever. And, and yet I've always had this, um, kind of like want to just be comfortable. Like I would, I would do that and then I would come back home and I would put on like yoga pants and just hang around the house, you know, some nice comfortable pants or whatever. Or when we lived in the Bay area, um, you know, and we were just kind of doing more urban suburban things. Um, you know, I, I, would get dressed up or, you know, put on a pair of nice jeans or something like that if I was going somewhere. But otherwise, you know, I kind of wore like yoga pants or workout pants and trail shoes, that sort of thing. Kind of more like athletic, what do they call it? Athletic leisure wear or whatever, something like that. But now, now I wear barn girl wear, like, like, you know, horse ranch wear. I mean, I have a pair of tall muck boots that I wear all winter. I have, um, that like, I just love them. Um, I wear a Carhartt jacket a lot because it's great for barn chores. Um, you know, if I'm riding, I do wear my, I have like riding tights and I have paddock boots and half chaps and that sort of thing that I wear, um, for riding. But I love, love, love just like, I don't want to change. Like, I don't really care if I have, you know, hay on my pants (laughs) and I'm going into Murdoch's or I'm even, you know, going shopping, grocery shopping. Um, I don't care. I don't care. You know, it's like throw a baseball cap on or throw a winter hat on if it's cold. And there's like often fur from our animals, you know, because we have a lot of animals, um, you know, horses and all the other pets that we have. And I am just happy as a clam. And, and, and I, I just love it. You know, it's like, I've got my, you know, and my, my boots, they, they often have, um, or, or my, uh, in the summer times, I'll often wear when it's like warmer, I have like an older pair of like running trail shoes that I'll wear that have a good tread on them. And so I'll wear them around to do like, you know, barn stuff because they're, they're not so hot. Um, but you know, they get like mud on them and manure on them and straw on them and hay on them and whatever. And I have no problem just going out and going, you know, to a restaurant or going, um, grocery shopping or whatever, wearing that. And again, it's so funny because it's so far from, from my lifestyle before, you know, and, and yet it is a lifestyle that I, that I love. And, you know, and it's not like everybody here dresses that way. Um, just to be clear, I mean, there are plenty of people in this area that, um, look like, you know, that they look like they could fit in the San Francisco Bay area. They've got their nice little, you know, either athletic wear on or nice little, you know, shoes and pants and a nice shirt and a nice coat and whatever. And, um, and there I am. And I, you know, I've got my, you know, whatever it is I'm wearing for the day. Um, And I just love it. I love being comfortable, but I love just being in 
my ranch wear, being in my horse girl wear. And um, it really kind of extends to, you know, to everything. It it really does. Um, There was a meme that popped up that I just think is so funny that, um, that I shared on my face, my personal Facebook feed, which, um, a lot of people in my life right now, I haven't known the horse side of me for a long time. And it was a meme showing like, um, two different pictures of, of like a Barbie doll. And one was the, the woman's hair, the Barbie's hair was like nice and, um, all pulled back into this nice, neat, like, I think it was like a nice, neat ponytail or a braid. It was all like smoothed down and perfectly straight and no hairs out. And it was like, there was that picture. And then there was one where her hair, like, kind of like was all out in all directions, um, like really big, and really full, almost like she put her finger in the light socket, but not, not like frizzy, not quite that bad. But basically the, the caption was, um, you know, my hair before the barn and my hair after the barn. And I just have to laugh because it's like that for me as well. You know, it's like, okay, I've got like hay in my hair or straw in my hair or shavings on my jacket or, you know, horse fur on my, my, um, tights or, you know, mud on my boots or whatever. And this is all just part of the, you know, our adventure in ranching, really, you know, our adventure in this lifestyle, our adventure in horses and being part of horses as our world and animals as our world. And this, this whole new thing that we've embarked on where I spend as much care and attention picking out a pitchfork these days as I did, you know, a pair of nice shoes from San Francisco or New York City, um, where I kind of sometimes am in shock at how much of our money goes to Murdoch's these days and all the things that we've bought there and how much we continue to spend there (laughs) to the delight, the absolute pure delight on my youngest son's face as he was driving the tractor. And, um, and on that note, actually, I always, I I always felt that a move to Montana was going to affect my kids in positive ways. I didn't really know how I, I suspected, um, because I knew that growing up around horses and, and riding was so life changing for me. It was so good for me. Um, And, um, because when I was, um, when I was really little, we lived, we didn't live in the part of Pennsylvania where, uh, then I, I, I grew up. Um, originally we lived near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And, and if we had lived there, if we had stayed living there, horses, I don't think horses would have ever entered my reality. Um, it was because my dad moved his business to central Pennsylvania and we had moved in a house where um, there was a farm across the street. And my sister saw this pony and she got really into, she, she's six years older than me. So she got into like riding this pony and, and then I got into riding um, from her really and from what she was doing. But if we hadn't ever moved there and we hadn't had that experience, I don't think we'd have ever kind of ever, you know, done anything with horses and um, ponies or riding or anything like that, you know. And, And so it's so funny to see, though, just I know that where we're living right now and living on this you know, what my mother-in-law calls a ranch, I would call more of like a ranchette um, in Montana is such, 
something that I have, uh, I, I can't even describe it. I mean, there is, there is something so magical that I do know that I've always wanted, which is to look out my window and see horses that are my own. I mean, for me to even look out a window and see any horses would have been super cool. But to see horses that are my own on my own land, you know, and they're my horses or my horse, that was a dream I just never even thought I could have. I never could, I never realized it was an option. And yet that's what I have. Actually, we can look right out of our kitchen window into our um, one permanent pasture and uh, and the shelter and see the horses right there Um, unless they decide to you know go to the very opposite end of the pasture which they do a lot (laughs) because horses love 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 to go to the opposite from where you have their nice you know perfect shavings and their beautiful water and their food and all that Um, especially in a snowstorm or in rain or hail or whatever it's like they love to not go where you think that they would go. They love to go where they're going to go no matter what. But, you know, they do come in and they hang out in the shelter or they come and they eat or whatever. And, um, and I get to see them from my kitchen and, um, which is like a kitchen, dining room, living room, great room, kind of a combination space. And, um, and it's magical. It is so magical. And sometimes I find myself pinching myself that, you know, this is what I get to do, you know, and, and I drive back from Murdoch's and it's this beautiful, beautiful drive where there's just these mountains, snow capped mountains around us and these fields and, and, and it's just gorgeous. There's trees and I see animals and, you know, I listen to whatever songs are coming on and it strikes me that, wow, we're doing the Montana thing. And this is part of our adventure in ranching. And I love it. So anyway, I wanted to share that today. Um, And I guess I feel like in closing... If you're resonating with this because you have your own little ranch at or homestead or whatever, and you're kind of seeing some of the changes between maybe your old lifestyle and your new lifestyle, and you're laughing along, um, that's awesome. I love it. Um, and if you're not, you know, and yet you've kind of wondered about what it would be like to live a very different lifestyle in a place that your heart is calling you to, um, maybe on a ranch or a ranchette or a homestead or whatever. I, I can't, I can't tell you, you know, this was not a planned thing, but it is one that is, my heart has planned it. I, my heart always had it planned. Um, is what I've come to see. It's always been like something that is awakened within me that was always there that I just, I didn't know how to make it. I didn't know how to make it part of my reality for a long time. So I didn't think it was possible, but it is. Um, And I truly believe that it is that, that when we have these kinds of callings to ourselves or from ourselves, from our deepest kind of feelings um, that that new life is actually available to us and waiting for us. Um, So maybe you have your own adventure in ranching uh, coming up that you might be inspired to explore or to entertain as a novel idea from hearing this or some of my episodes and if so that that delights me because 
other people sharing their journeys and their experiences is what's helped me to get to this place where we're embarking on our own adventure in ranching. So I'm going to end on that note until the next episode. I'm so glad you joined me on the Adventures in Ranching podcast. To learn more about my other offerings, you can visit my website at michellewaldo.com. That's M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-W-A-L-D-O.com.